Yo, 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 you know what it is, man. The live is cloud radio show on the planet, man. Straight from the E Block Live where you're down, man. Let's get it in. Yo, what up, though? You know what time it is, man. Time for the live at Cloud Radio Show on the planet, man. Straight from the E-Block Radio is live on your dial right this moment. You got 60 minutes to ride the block with the live is crew on Cloud Radio, the live is hot topics, and the live is independent music fine anywhere. You know what it is, man. The live is Cloud Radio Show on the planet. Straight from the E-Block Radio. It's your boy, the hood Howard Stern, Q. Lewis. Got my man Monk Money holding it down. From my block to your block and every block across the nation. Let's get it. The livest cloud radio show on the planet. E-Block Radio. Slow up, Slow up, For the show, man. We're the building manager, boy, the hood. I was starting Q. Lewis. Got my man Monk Money holding it down. What up, boy? I am that guy. What's poppin'? <laughs> same old, same old, man. Happy to be back in the studio, you know what I'm saying? The one thing that I treasure every week, you know what I'm talking about? I want to welcome everybody back to the block. Of course, man, it's been a long week, so we got to kick. We got to see what's been going on. But uh, don't forget, if you're on social media right now, you got to hit us up on Twitter. Hit up my man, Real Monk Money, myself, Hood Howard Stern. Same thing on Instagram, all right, Hood Howard Stern, Real Monk Money, dog, hit us up. Hit up two G's too, I guess, man. I guess he's still alive, wherever he at, man. Shout out to my man, <laughs> two G's. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to him. Uh, his name, his name has changed on everything so often. We gonna have to wait till he call in so you can see what his name is at this point. Cause I don't even know. But uh, anyway, man, it's been a long week since last week, bro. So, uh, you know what's been popping with you, dog? Man, same old, same old with your boy, dog. You know, I mean, I I don't know what's going on at my job, dog, but this motherfucker banging. Like, what? Man, dog. Well, that's a good thing, right? I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I like it. <to, laughs> you like it with slow motion, huh? I mean, no, not really, because, you know, the time moves by faster when you're doing something. You know what I'm saying? True. That's what I said. So that's, that's the only way. But I like it busy, but not ultimately busy. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, I mean, especially on a few few dudes to handle what this what is coming, you know what I'm saying? So Right. I mean but you know your boy is soldier, so I got it. You know uh, what I mean? We'll, we'll quit bitching then. <laughs> I got a bitch, man. Yeah, you gotta got do that. You. Man, I wouldn't <laughs> beat me if I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, man. Other than the plantation running you ragged, bro, what's going on with you? Oh, nothing too much, man. Just getting prepared for my son, man. My son is graduating from high school, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, you got a lot of preparation to go through. Even though it's only it's only October, October now or November now, right? Yeah, it's November yeah. already. Damn, that shit shot on Every night, other man. week is something. Senior do. Senior got to do this. Senior got to do this. Got to senior uh-huh. do the trip. Got to senior, senior, right. senior, senior. Where is they, uh, where is they senior trip to? They having one? I don't even know yet. I'm paying on it, but I don't know yet. Right, because, yeah, you know, I'm saying trips be, shit, they might be going to fucking Australia or some shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, that shit can cost you a pretty penny. Kids are expensive, pretty. shit, I understand. I don't know why they say pretty penny, because that shit be making you make the ugliest face when you guys spend all that money. <laughs> <laughs> that shit pretty about it, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah talking about pretty penny. That penny, ugly as shit. <laughs> you a fool, man. Yeah, hey, it's, it's almost it's almost Thanksgiving time, man. What you got going on for the Thanksgiving holiday? Oh, uh, you know how your man do it. You know what I'm saying with cooking being my profession. You know what <laughs> profession. I'm man, I'm gonna do a bit. I'm gonna try to do some brisket. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a pork bun. You know my my, yeah. my usual Thanksgiving. Do something major, usual... okay? I see. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I do it I like I do it all every year. But, you know, right. other than that, man, just chilling with people, man, my, my loved ones, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, eating good, you know what I'm saying, I'm always looking forward to that, so, I feel you. yeah, man, hey. man, I'm amped about it. Hey, let's go, speaking of, uh, speaking of which, man, talking about, you know, cooking as a profession, mm-hmm. I was, uh, watching,
watching uh, watching the Breakfast Club the other day, and mm-hmm. Trick Daddy was on there. Mm-hmm. And don't he be cooking like a motherfucker? Did you know that? Trick Daddy two chains too. No, no, I, I didn't even know that. Trick Daddy dog was on that motherfucker cooking up some shit, boy. He he didn't know that. Uh, he got like his own brand of spices and sauces or some shit. Yeah. I didn't even know all that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what's so, up. That's, it's a lot of a lot of them dudes in the industry uh, cooking. Like I just honestly just saw a show yesterday with Tia Tamara. I don't know if it was Tia or Tamara. I think it was Tia. One of them One one of the twins got their own cooking show too. You know, oh, they got a cooking okay. show, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So a lot of celebrities get down. Two chains get down for show for show. Oh, all right, man. Yeah. Look, the world waiting on you, bro. The world waiting on you. I know, man. I need to put my foot through the door. Now you might well, dog. We waiting on you, dog. The world is ready. So I'm coming like, <laughs> hey, I'm coming like porn stars, cuz. Hey, so look. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so you wanna you wanna do regular, you know, you wanna do regular recipes, or you wanna do that, you know, that that weed that weed recipe? I honestly, I wanna do both. You know, what yeah. I'm I mean, I, I like dealing with the um the edibles. You know what I'm saying? Like so. making creamers and. You know, put stuff together on that, but I also like I just love food, bro. You know what I mean? So yeah. I any which it. avenue I go to, man, I just, I just pray that I'm successful. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's uh. Hey, well, look, anybody, uh, anybody interested in putting together a cooking show, man, make sure you hit up my man, Real Month Money. All right, that's on Twitter or on Instagram. All right, make sure you check him out. And uh, if you check out his Instagram, you will see a lot of his food on there anyway. So he ain't bullshitting. He can really cook. <laughs> so check out my man there for sure. Yeah, hey, dog. I heard that. Uh, I heard that it was windy than a motherfucker in Detroit today, man. What's going bro, on with that? I don't know, bro. But I went outside, right? You go outside, yeah. smoke a cigarette at work, bro. The dough slapped me, damn, I'm, damn, it broke my nose. <laughs> yeah, I heard it was windy as hell down there. Man, yeah. man, like That's fifty crazy. miles an hour, bro. Yeah, that shit chilled out yet? Huh? Did it chill yet, or it's still windy as hell? It's still windy as hell. As, honestly, honestly, my boss just left from where you you where you at, bro? Got out here in Denver. Yeah, he was me all kind of pictures of his breakfast spot, dog. Got to hit that boy when we just rock up out there, dog. Oh, okay. It was it was snowing. It was, it was snowing like hell up here, but it's crazy though, cause the it snowed like hell, and then like at around ten o'clock, that shit was over. The streets was dry and shit. I couldn't understand. I ain't right. what the hell happened. Yeah. And, and my man said he went to the zoo. He said snow, snow, yeah, snow. Yeah, snow, and then it should just go away. And then he went to the zoo. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> right, that's how this shit be, man. Hey, shout out to Denver, man. I like this kind of snow, man. It, it snow like a motherfucker, though. But it don't it don't sit nowhere for long. Shit. By the middle of the day, that shit be gone already, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, sir. That's what's up. But, uh, other than that, man, what's going on with my guy, though? What's going on with my guy? Tell me what's yeah. going on with my guy. Ain't, ain't too much been going on, man. I've been, you know, kind of playing the low key, just trying to find my position out here in Colorado. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's been cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm making it do what it do. Of course, making more progress on the book. So you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna set a, a, a date uh, for the book, and we're gonna do uh, December the 10th. All right, okay. that's gonna be my official. That's gonna be my official publication date. So it's uh, off the block volume two. All right, gonna be available on Amazon and in hard copy form. Uh, on December 10th, so look out for that. And uh, just to give you a heads up, man, I ain't really tell nobody else this is uh, the man himself, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there now. My man Derek will be writing the foreword for me in the book, so I'm gonna, I got another, you know what I'm saying, got another one of my soldiers in in the process, you know what I'm saying, so that's what's Let's up. Go. Man. Let's go. So shout out to my man D. Will, you know what I'm talking about. Derek, Derek Speaks. Speaks. Make sure you check him out on Twitter and on Instagram, Derek Speaks. You better you better learn his name now because once it get real big, don't 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 ask me for no favors. Right, right. Don't, ask <laughs> plug, no don't ask me to plug you now. Exactly. You better ask me to plug you right now because once it gets major, don't even worry about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But outside of that, man, that's really been about it. Though. I still have, and believe it or not, man, I've been out here for like three months and I still have not experienced the Colorado Reefer. Oh and it's, uh, God, I know, it's, I know, I'm slipping, but I'm, I'm gonna take care of that. And probably, probably in the, in the upcoming week, so this, maybe this weekend or next week, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and partake in some of the, um, some of the herbal essence of Colorado. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I haven't done that yet. 
But I heard, I heard it's, uh, you know, I heard it's all right. I heard it's uh, something to be, uh, something to be talked about. So we gonna check it out. Man, my man, man, my, like I said, my man, my boss just came back from that man. He just had me. He just had some experiences that he told me, dog. Like, yeah. he said he, he had. They, he walk in and the police walk in and behind them purchasing something. I say what? <laughs> I say yeah, what? Yeah, because everybody smoking, everybody high. I guess that's why the crime rate so low. Everybody, everybody chilling. Hey, he say he, he say even the zoo smell like night. For real? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, the animals high. Right. <laughs> Hell no, that's crazy, man. Hey, but shit, uh, other than that, man, that's, that's really been about it, man. I've just been chilling, focusing on, you know, getting this book prepared, you know what I'm saying, trying to get that together and uh, get that out here so we can get that volume two rolling. And I can work on this other novel that I'm I'm working on, too. So I, I've been getting a lot of comments out here, though, so I, I'm thankful for that. You know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for the... The Colorado inspiration has been working for me, so that's what's up. But uh, before we jump off into uh, the topic, so, of course, if you've been following us on Twitter or on Facebook, you know what we're talking about today. Um, we're, talking about, we're talking about the military, trying to figure out is it a good place uh, for black people. So before we jump on that, though, I want to get on to some, a couple of other little, uh, little headlines before we get into that. And also at the end of the show, i got my man Old Measy Miles representing all the way I got my man Omizi Miles. So we got South Jersey in the house, man. You know what I'm saying? So if, if you know anything about Jersey, and you already know, that's where my man Red Man is from. So I got I to gotta show Jersey some love, you know what I'm saying? Bridge City. Shout out to my but, dude Tim. He's from Jersey. Oh, what? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. He is from Jersey. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what's up. So, yeah, we got to show my man uh, Omizi Miles some love, man. He. He got a matter of fact. The record I'm playing tonight is actually one that he got. He got on rotation at Shade 45 already. So he's doing major things already. So you know what I'm saying. So shout out to to my man Omizi Miles. We're gonna check him out. Uh, we're gonna check him out at the end of the show. And don't forget, if you're on Instagram or Twitter, you can also catch up with him at Omizi Miles. All right. So same thing, just like uh, just like his name, Omizi Miles. So it's uh, real easy. And then of course on our website, if you go to eblockradio.com. You can click on this picture and it'll take you to his Reverb Nation page and you can check out the rest of his music. All right. So before we jump off into everything, though, first thing I want to talk about, though, is this. Now, I don't know if uh, if you peeped this because I, I know you probably, you probably been working like a slave. But uh, so, well, first of all, it's, it's about, it's about uh, Hardy, right, uh, my man from, uh, from Dallas, from the Cowboys. So, you know, last year, whatever, he uh, beat up his girl, uh, the, the – the, the case got threw out or whatever, and they let him play. So now all that shit happened. All the legal shit is done. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the case got dismissed. They let him play. Everything good. Now all of a sudden, uh, Deadspin, uh, the magazine, puts out the pictures of the bruises uh, of his girlfriend and shit. Now, first of all, my whole thing with this is, like, you know what? I ain't saying nothing about I ain't saying nothing about you know uh, domestic violence. I'm just saying once you go through the legal system and all of that shit, what was the purpose of this though? So now I guess the the media want want to take his case to the to the to the people's court, so to say. You know what I'm saying? Like now you want people to judge him because he already they already went through the legal shit. So why 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 put them pictures out now? This shit happened last year. Like and went through all the legalities and all of that shit. So why put it out now? I mean, I, I don't know. What what you what you think about that, dog? Man, they don't want to they, they don't want to see nobody get successful, bro. People make mistakes, bro. Leave that shit under the rug, bro. And my thing is, they sweep so much shit under the rug. And and okay, I don't promote domestic violence. You should not, never, ever, 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 right. ever put your hands on the female. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But come on, dog. If she forgave him, the law let him go past and do his thing, bro. Like, why y'all still messing with this man, dog? Mm-hmm. You know, people make mistakes in life, bro. People in prison for life, you know what I'm saying, for making mistakes. People getting out of prison that's making better with their life from that mistake they made. So people make mistakes, bro. So just yeah. let it be. He did his thing. He did the legal thing. She probably yeah. ain't been talking to him, but he, he, he already going through it. So just leave this man alone, man. I mean, these people, the media. The media, man, something else, bro. Like, I mean, honestly, though, like, 
Don't get it twisted. I, I guess I'm some part of the media, but dog, it's just it's just the way they portray shit is like, come on, man, it's ridiculous to me sometimes, bro. No, like, I, it's really I agree. ridiculous. Bro. Yeah, I really don't see I don't see the importance. I mean, other than, other than of course, it's a media outlet, so they're trying to probably you know get ratings and, and shit like right. that. Right, and uh, they feed us the bullshit. Sales. Yeah. Now, what I what I'm really wondering though is that see this is a this is a totally different animal, only because I, I say this because you can bring that shit up, you can you can bring those pictures back, but then you already talking about you know on on national or on, on was it national TV or whatever it was, it was televised when you know him and him and some of the players was getting into it with each other on the sideline, so they already had statements. From uh from Jerry Jones. Now Jerry Jones knows his situation and shit, and basically he he dismissed he dismissed uh Greg Hardy's behavior. Period. Right. Well, so now yeah. now this turns into something else. Cause now, you know that's a shit. Jerry Jones is a machine. I mean, yeah. you ask me, Jerry Jones may be bigger than the NFL, and because he he makes shit happen that ain't supposed to happen. Yes. So now. What you gonna say now though? Because he he allowed him to play. So now you go you gonna attack Jerry Jones character? Let's see how far that shit go. Because you know, I hate to say it, but you know you know white men get a little more respect than we do. So he is Dallas, bro. He is Dallas, bro. Come on, so come on. How far that's gonna go now? Right, that boy, that man is Dallas himself, bro. <laughs> Right. So if y'all want to go and try to attack that guy, go right ahead. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna get no get you nowhere. You know what I'm right. talking about? So I mean, let him go ahead and do what they think. Jerry Jones, man, like, he is Dallas, bro. No, for real. So I, you know, I, I don't know how far this will go, or even why, you know, why the media even still thought. Why the, you know, the thing is, it may not even be a race thing. It may just be a, it may just be a, a entertainment thing or a sports thing. Like people just. I think that there's so much money and so much fanfare into pro athletes that I think that people really do try to find every little thing to make sure that, that you bring them down to your level. I mean, the thing is, is that we started this shit. When you first take your kid to Pop Warner or Little League, you started that shit. You started that shit. When you, when you first took them to be athletes, you started that shit. They were, they have been on a different platform ever since. It, it's just how people work. Like, it's not, you can't be mad about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Been that way since, uh, since football since the beginning of time. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it, it just does happen. Now, like I said, now, if, if he had been found, you know, some, if he had been found guilty and all that shit, then, then fine. But you wait a year later to, you know, to bring to bring that shit up or to, you know, show pictures, which this was all, you know, it's kind of how they did, how they did Chris Brown when he beat Rihanna. Now, he beat Rihanna for real, though. And, like, he got he got charges for that. So, yeah. like, you know, I guess that's a little different. He actually got charged for that shit. So, I, I think that's a little bit different. But I just think it was, I, I think it's, uh, it, it's something that they didn't have to do. They didn't have to bring them pictures up. To try to to bring it back to the light when he already been through it and and got it resolved, so I don't see what the issue is. Yeah, and you said uh, it ain't racial, but I mean I know a lot of other NFL players man. that has been through situations <laughs> and, and things. Right. You know what I'm saying that you really don't hear nothing about anymore. You feel me? Right. Well, yeah, I don't, right. I'm not gonna name any names. <laughs> Why you scared? No, I ain't scared, but it's no point. I mean, I like to do it. I feel like no point. I, right, it's no point. I like to do. I like a couple of these dudes as athletes, but that's what they are, athletes. Though they're there for the entertainers, bro. People' right. personal life. We can't get into their personal life. You know what I'm saying? They role models, okay, they role models, but in their personal life, that's their personal life. Like they have to have some kind of personal life, dog. That people do not. Understand, dog, with the media and the paparazzi and all that, they have to have right. some kind of personal life, dog. You know what I mean? Right. So, leave it alone, yeah. man. They have to have something. 
Now, real quick too, before we uh jump uh jump off into the subject, I know I know I'll be we be taking a long time to jump in, but I I gotta mention this too, just because we're talking about we're talking about sports and and we're talking about black and white people. Obviously, we somehow we always get back to that because there's always a conversation there. But uh the 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 shit going on at University of Missouri now, I mean obviously is uh they're saying you know there's been some 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 racial you know some racial shit going on. Uh, at the same time, it's involved in, you know, some of the the, uh, the football program. And, of course, they said the, the question there was, you know, is, is football bigger than, you know, the is, is it the biggest thing on campus, basically? Now, since then, they, they actually had a, a, a protest uh, at, at uh, Missouri University. I think either – was it – was it, it was either today or, or yesterday. I can't – I think it was – I think it was yesterday. But, yeah, they, they've been out there protesting and everything. Now – the crazy thing here, though, is that the 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 protest though now a lot of the media outlets are saying that the protest is was basically bogus, like it, it's built off of bogus premises. So now they they kind of shooting down, um, you know, the the fact that that uh you know that there's so much racism going on on campus there. So now now I'm confused because you know when you when you learning about stuff. Through you know through the media, it's really it really is hard to get the real story. Like I don't I don't I'm not sure if if stuff like if stuff really going on like that or or what. Like I mean, because basically what happened was um, it was racial intimidation going on campus. I think it was a uh, one of the social media sites or something. Uh, somebody was like, uh, uh, I'm going. I think it said, uh, "Don't quote me on this." Uh, it's something similar. It's like I'm going to stand my ground tomorrow and shoot every black person I see. Some shit like that, right? So like, there's some real shit going on. But now, like they they trying to say like this stuff didn't happen. So now I'm confused. Like I don't know if they just trying to take the 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 take the power out of the 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 protest or you know. Or do the protesters really got their really shit fucked up? No, they always try to sugarcoat it, bro. Basically, it's sugarcoated, yeah. dog. They or or, yeah. or 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 not shining any light on it. You know what I'm saying? Just try to sweep it up yeah. under the rug, like everything else, like the Sandusky thing. Like they sweep so much stuff under the rug, bro. Like they know it's yeah. been going on for the longest, so it's been getting sweeped up under the rug this long. Okay, y'all caught us. Now come on, put it back up under the rug. Basically. Right. Now they was they also you know they was also saying that it was it was actual like uh, KKK on campus. So now they're saying that none of that has actually been proven. But then I guess the thing is is that it's probably gonna be hard to prove it because most of the motherfuckers ain't outward with their shit. No. So how do you prove it? Like how like do you vampires. prove it? <laughs> right. <laughs> man, that, that shit crazy. That's just a we talk on that for a minute, man, before we get to the to the next subject, but. I just had to mention that because I felt like if I didn't, you know, I wasn't gonna do it right. And I say that because I got one more thing, dog. <laughs> one more thing, dog. All right, so it was uh my man, uh, Nazir. Damn, I can't think of his last name. He he uh, actually from Detroit though, but the dude who did who produced the Hidden Colors series, right? Yeah. Um. So you know he got a bunch of other books too though about like. Macking and pimping and shit, right? Like relationship shit. So he was on Big Boy the other day, uh, 92.3 out in L.A. And you know they do a they do a webcast or a podcast, or whatever, so you can see the video. And I was just I was I was kind of concerned because they spent the whole it was like a 40 minute interview. They spent the whole time talking about uh, his books about you know pimping and macking and shit like that, right? What? But they never. Well, I ain't gonna say that, but I think in the last forty seconds, they were just asking him, you know, what else he got going on, and he mentioned, he mentioned, you know, his whole other series of hidden colors, right? This this whole time, he never mentioned that. And then what fell me though when he said it, Big Boy was like, oh, uh, hidden colors, like what, what's that? Like so they interviewing him, and they don't even know this, That's but they spent four, but they spent forty minutes talking oh, about wow. some pimping and macking and you know. shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I know Big Boy just, to, you know, he just worked there. But I, I started thinking, like, damn, I wonder, in the back of my head, I wonder, is the, is the radio station responsible for, for bearing them away from talking about that? 
Because, like, how, how would you be on a national stage like that and not talk about hidden color? How could you do it? Like, you, you just feel like a discredit to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would have done that. Yeah, yeah, I'd have that shit in there somehow, even if you didn't ask me. Because, just because. Just because everybody else has a fucking agenda, so why don't we? Exactly. No, exactly. simple as that. No, I got it, I got it. All right, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead on that shit now, nah, man. Don't forget, man, if you're on eblockradio.com, right, <laughs> we got to switch it up. If you're on eblockradio.com, man, hit us up. 760-283-4647. You know what it is, man. The livest cloud radio show on the planet, E Block Radio. <laughs> hey, <that's> it, man. <laughs> we go out to a uh, commercial break real quick, man. We back in two minutes, so make sure you call back in, man. We talking about black people in the military. We want to know is the military a good place for a black person? I wasn't say a black man, but of course, you know, there's a lot of women. There's a lot of women that's getting down now, is. Yeah. Yeah, so we want to we want to hear from y'all, man. Seven six zero two eight three forty six forty seven. Hit that number one key, man. We be back in like two minutes. Uh, How's your boy? Sir. Witness the black tie experience. Black tie photography, servicing all of Metro Atlanta area. My name is Cedric Pitts, your photographer. Check out our website at www blacktiepictures.com or like our Facebook page facebook.com forward slash blacktiepictures let me capture your professionalism in class and you will have the ultimate black tie experience Yo, 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 it's your boy, the Hood Howard Stern, Q. Lewis, producer of the largest cloud radio show on the planet, straight from the E-Block Radio. Here to let you know that you can represent the radio show and your side of town with our very own t-shirt line, Pardon My East Side. You can get yours. Wow, Hood Howard Stern, what's up with Pardon My West Side? Oh, slow down, Miss Coco J. Of course, we got the West Side cover, too, so you can get Pardon My East Side or Pardon My West Side t-shirts only thing you got to do is go to the website, www.eblockradio.com, and get yours today. $20 for the fellas, $15 for the ladies. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram as well, Pardon My East Side. The livest cloud radio show on the planet, eBlock Radio. What up, y'all? We back in the building, man. It's your boy, the hood, Howard Stern, Q. Lewis. Got my man, Mark Money, holding it down. What up, boy? I'm that dude. <laughs> For sure. If you did not check this out, man, you gotta know what we're talking about today. We're talking about we're talking about the military, man. I'm trying to figure out, you know, is the military a good place for black people, man? Now, I, this is this is great timing, of course, because yesterday was Veterans Day, so it's a good time and I know we, we do celebrate our veterans. I'm not mad that they that they did what they did or doing what they doing. But I just wanna know, like, is is it a good place? For us, man, you know what I'm talking about? Don't forget, man, if you're on eblockradio.com or if you're on Blog Talk Radio, you can hit us up, 760-283-4647, and uh, hit that number one key. But, uh, Mike, what, what you say, bro? What, is it a good place for us? No. Nah. Honestly, dog, I'm like, your boy is at a catch-22, bro. Like, yeah. for one, um, they don't even respect us as a race. So why are we fighting a war that has nothing to do with us or fight or going to this shit that has nothing to do with us? You know what I'm saying? Putting our lives on the line for nothing to do with us, though. Like, for, like for real, like, they don't even respect us as a as a race. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know? I mean, they take our culture. They take everything from us, bro, and they <laughs> snatch it from us. Seriously, though. Right. Like, for real. They snatch it from us, bro, from the fat asses to the big lips to the they want it. They want it all. You know what I'm saying? But will, <laughs> but would not give you no recognition for it. You feel me? Yeah, right. So that point being is now how I'm calling it a twist catch twenty two. Like it's a lot of people that need the military. You feel me? Like right. I mean, just for like guidance, discipline, uh, sense of team, sense of family. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't have that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot yeah, of people I like. You know, so that right there will give them a sense of guidance. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I have I know a lot of veterans, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not mad at them for doing what they did, bro. That's what that's what they wanted to do. You know what I mean? So go right ahead. I I'm I, I ain't going to shit. I'm not going to have no less love for you cuz you went to the military. <laughs> Uh, so it's all it's all you divide though. It's kind of like yeah, but nah, huh? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I'm like, I'm in the middle. I'm, yeah, I'm kind of in the middle, bro. Cause you know what I mean. Like we don't get respected at all, <laughs> for real. And I keep saying that, and I mean it, bro, from the bottom of my heart, though. Like we don't. And, and, and these these athletes and these these entertainers and and all that, you know what I'm saying. You have a light. You have a mic, man. Like I don't understand. But niggas is crazy. That's a whole right. That's a whole other conversation right there. Right? A whole other conversation. Bro. <laughs> but but yeah. I ain't gonna get into that, bro. But they have the light, bro, and they shine on the stupidest shit in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. strip clubs and, and and put 88s on your cars, and you know what I mean, like dude, 88s. <laughs> right, right, 88s, dog. 38s. Right, yeah, right. Man. You know what I'm saying? And and we do the wrong things, bro, and I just I just I'm just caught up in the middle. I don't know. I I don't think I don't I don't think it's good and I don't think it's bad either. <laughs> so you know what I mean? <laughs> You're caught in the middle of all that. All right, right, I, 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 I can I can appreciate your honesty there, man. Hey we don't don't give it though. If you're on eblockradio.com dot com or if you're on blog talk radio, you can hit us up seven six zero Two eight three forty six forty seven and hit that number one key. Uh, we're gonna shoot to the phone lines real quick. I got a seven seven zero eight zero seven. You on live straight from the E Block. How at your boy? Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for taking my call. I'd very much like to contribute in this discussion you're having tonight. All right. Uh, first of all, well, two of the best you, things I two of the best things I ever did in my life. Number one, marry my beautiful black woman who's my wife. For 32 years. Okay. That was one thing. The best thing. The okay. second best thing I did was join the United States Army. And I spent five okay. years on active duty and another 22 mm-hmm. years in the uh, Army National Guard. I'm a three-war okay. combat veteran, combat veteran, uh, two-and-a-half duty in mm-hmm. Vietnam. I got called to Operation Desert Shield. We didn't go to combat because the war on the ground war only lasted for 100 hours, but we were there training right. ready to go in the second echelon of commitment. But I did get call up for the opening stages of Ra- Operation Iraqi Freedom. So uh, okay. three three war combat veterans. So a lot of my buddies die. I got 19 of them whose names are on that wall in Vietnam. I mean, wall in Washington D.C. And uh, I saw oh. a lot of bad things. A lot of I'm not saying it was unrelieved paradise. My service in the army. A lot of it was awful. <laughs> right. A lot of it was hideous. <laughs> a lot of it. But but you know, in the aggregate, if you want to know what I think about my military service in the aggregate, I wouldn't trade it. For it, it was the single best learning experience of my life. The things I learned about mm-hmm. myself, the limits of my endurance, human nature, comradeship, uh, uh, a savagery, ignobility, nobility, courage, cowardice, everything. It was the single That's most right. valuable learning experience of my life over and above anything college has to offer, over and above anything I learned in any school. And believe me, I wouldn't trade any of it for anything. Plus, I'm proud as hell of it. Proud as hell, okay, good, good, you know, because good, you know, because good. you know, unlike being black, which I never could say I'm proud of being black. Now I'm grateful for being black because I like black culture. I like growing up for right. the thing, but but I have nothing to do with being born black. My parents could see me. I didn't have no choice about getting born. I'm black because that's what I am. I ain't proud of that, right. but I'm proud <laughs> that I joined the United States Army and became a soldier and a damn good one too. So yeah, you know, so the thing right. of it is, yeah, is you know, exactly. like yeah, I, I think. It depends on the black person. Being in the army yeah, may be that. good for yeah. you. It may yeah. be bad for you. Depends not, on who you yeah. are. Depends on your experiences. Depends on what you bring to the table. Depends upon what the table does to you. Who knows? But I'll tell you one thing. The armed forces has the potential to be good for anyone. Okay. Now, now after, like, now obviously I know what you, you, spent, you said it was five years of actual active duty, right? Yeah, and the rest of it was the other 21 years in the uh, uh, National Guard. And I was in the sharp and, and end, too. I was an infantryman. Uh-huh. I was a tank commander. I went to range school, okay. went to jump school, assistant artillery, forward observer school, all this stuff. I was on the sharp end. Not to say there's anything wrong with being a rimp. I know you know what a rimp is, rear echelon, beep, beep. But, you know, I mean, because they're right. important. Yeah, in fact, they're, just, they're just as important as anybody else. 
because they get the beans yeah. and the bullets to you. So I'm not disparaging anybody's honorable service. It's all important. But I'm just letting you know for context's right. sake. I was at the sharp now, end. Now, what I was, was going to say, though, so if we're five years of, of active service, like, at what point did you come to this understanding, though? Like, I mean, is that something that you you, you, felt, you felt that pride in serving from the from the jump? Or, like, when did that really yeah, set in uh, that, you uh, know, you know this is a great look, idea? The, uh, the, the United States Army, when I went in, wasn't no cakewalk. Training was very tough. It was rigorous. I went to the kind of schools that really demanded a lot, I particularly in Ranger School. And all the other stuff. Okay. And the, I went to Armour and Commanding Officer Candidate course and all that stuff. It was, it was rigorous, very tough training. And I was very proud of the fact I picked it up and I learned it. And, uh, you know, I, I, was, I, I felt the pride in being in a good outfit that knew what it was doing. And uh, we went on overseas. Right. I had the good fortune to be commanded by good officers and be in pretty good units for the most part. And uh, so I, I was always putting pride. But, see, I was in during the Vietnam era, and believe me, the things they were saying about what we did in Vietnam and what we were, and what, man, it bore no relation to what I experienced over in Vietnam for 18 months. No relation at all. No. Okay. I'm, I'm hearing all this job back here in the States. I'm talking to guys from different units all over Vietnam because my service has been up with carrying me to different uh, uh, locales, different core areas. I was in Northern I Corps on a demilitarized zone, but I would go to different different core areas. I talked to guys in different units, even some guys in a couple of foreign countries like North, uh, South Koreans and Australians, because they had some of them over there too. Okay. And they bore no relation to war. We talk about we're getting defeated, and we were beating the hell out of the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese Army. We were whipping them. There were about 20, 23 dead for every one American we had, roughly. And, you know, and, and right. I, I'm saying to yeah. myself, how are they talking about we losing this war? I get back, and I'm hearing all these <laughs> protests that call us baby killers. <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm on a demilitarized zone where there ain't nothing up there. Believe me, there's no civilian, no villages hardly. The ones that were villages that were were, were not contested in combat. There was pretty much right. broad areas, you know, open air. It was like Peleliu during World War II. The North Vietnamese were dug in a bunker lines along various ridges, and they'd fight with us like a conventional army. I'm saying, where's all this baby killing going? I'm talking to other guys. Well, you well, been killing any babies lately? No. But that's what we're talking about. That was the tar and brush thing we were brushed with. I didn't let it get to me because I just knew better. But I knew there was. I, 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 in fact, it increased my measure of pride because I knew better, and I was determined not to let these lies get to me. Or well, well, let me let me ask you this though. Let me ask you this though. With, with, with that in mind, and with that with that same pride, I mean, how how does it make you feel though when you do come back home and you you kind of face even more challenges that you think that you shouldn't have since you you fought for this same country that at some point doesn't really respect you. I mean, how does that make you feel? Well, that, well that's not true. Many people, including many, yeah, white people, were quite grateful for my service at the time. Some didn't like me. Mm-hmm. I ran bigotry. I ran in – I would say the more white people respected me, particularly when I was wearing my uniform, than didn't, most of them expressed gratitude even then. Uh, even despite the protesters, and, and that was black people and white people, mm-hmm. most were grateful for me being uniform, expressed their appreciation of it. There were some that didn't like me. So what? If they weren't impeding my uh, goals well, in life, well, if they weren't impeding my goals well, in life, if they weren't preventing uh-huh. me from getting I could care less. I'm not going to see most of them again anyway. Who cares about them? I don't care about them. I don't know. Well, what about, what about a time like, I don't need everybody's what about time? love in the world. <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, what about a, what about a time like like now though, when when you can lose your life to a law enforcement agent and and the same the same laws that you went to go fight to protect are now letting those same officers uh, often killing them. Uh, like, sir, how, how uh, that make you feel though? Yeah, sir. Understand, I'm a retired Illinois State Policeman. Okay. Mm-hmm. I spent 28 years on that job, and I think okay. this whole mess. And believe me, cops ain't perfect, and they commit crimes, and many of them should quite rightly be prosecuted and go to jail. I am not saying police are perfect. They're government okay. agents. You need to watch every okay. agent of the government. I don't care who it is. That's your duty as a citizen to monitor I'm, I'm and glad, make them I'm justify their that. actions. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. This whole thing, this Black Lives Matter and this racial industrial complex and the demagoguery they're stirring up, it's wildly exaggerated. It's bull you know what for the most part. Not completely. You think so? Some of it is true. But I'm talking about hands up, don't shoot. That's a total damnable lie. 
on many of the other things they've said, total damnable lies. Eric Garner, total damnable lies, because I studied both of those cases from noon to breakfast. I've got megabytes of data on both of them. They are simply lies stirred up by the racial industrial complex to keep us stirred up against each other. It's just that simple. Now, some of it is true. That guy, Walter Scott, yeah, there's questions there. The guy that North Carolina State who questions? shot that man who was reaching for his oh, driver's good. license. Oh, okay. okay, you got a case there. But let's not make up things that ain't true. Go after the genuine cases, which is a teeny tiny yeah. percentage when you stop to think that police officers make arrests hundreds of millions of times a year all around the country. So, so well, you well, okay, so tens you of millions of arrests. No, I'm sorry, hundreds of millions of exaggerations. Tens of millions of arrests every year around the country. Um, a large mm-hmm. plurality of them are for violent crimes. And how many people get killed, okay. justifiable or not? Less than 600? Okay, I'll give you double that. And most of them are justified shootings. A great majority of them are justified. So, I mean, this is wildly so, exaggerated. So, so I you wish can, can people would get off of it. So you can honestly say that we're we're not we're not at a disposition, as, especially as black men. We're not at a disposition where we're law enforcement. You can honestly say oh, that. Oh no, 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 no. Well, I didn't say that. I never said that. Oh, black oh men, that's oh, what it sounded oh, like. Oh, well, oh, let me explain. Oh, oh, let me explain that. Oh, 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 you got to me explain. Oh, you got to let me explain. Black men okay, are okay. are disproportionately arrested okay. for violent crimes. However. It is okay. also an okay. indisputable fact, based on my empirical knowledge and my study of the objective data for the last 25 years, black men also appear to disproportionately commit a number of violent crimes as well. So both are true. Okay. I, I mean, we, 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 we can argue about the parameters just, and how – <laughs> Well, wait a minute. We can argue about the parameters and how – uh, you know, and how policing should be conducted, whether it's appropriate, mm-hmm. uh, 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 whether or not the police, op- police are being held to their oath of office and their duty. I welcome that any time of the day. I want it to continue because right. police do have the potential, if they're not held in check to their proper constitutional role and duty, to impose tyranny on the public because of the authority True. and the power they wield. So I don't have any problem right. with you asking the questions and demanding okay. accountability. I just have a problem with people right. making up hands up, don't shoot. It was the most damnable lies I've ever seen in my life. Officer well, Daniel, well, 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 I, I ain't talking. To, I ain't talking about damage your lies and all that shit. I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that I see it. Like you know what I mean? Like I've seen cops just beat on on people for no reason. You know, I've been beat on for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Well, then just those cops who I are am. criminals. Those police officers yes, they are, are criminals. <laughs> okay, yes, what do you want me to do? I'm not going to defend them. If they beat on you, as you <laughs> said, right. for no reason, they are criminals just like a thug in the street. In fact, more so because they're doing it under color of law and color of authority. They're even more of a criminal right. than the thug who does it because he wants your wallet. So, uh, and I think they, they should do more background checks I'm on not, these officers. I'm not I don't think these officers get enough background checks on them. Like, I got to get a background check to go here, to go there, to go get a job. I don't think they go back enough and deep enough for these cops to uh, get these jobs. Like, I mean, a regular joke come off the street and be a, become a cop, stay focused for a minute, get on the right track and be a cop, but still have these demons in them and nobody see nothing, All nobody right. recognize okay, nothing, now and nobody said anything. Issue. You raise a legitimate issue. Is your department in the jurisdiction in which you live, are they conducting adequate background checks of their personnel? They may be. They may not be. Okay. That's a They're legitimate not. They're question not. They ask. can be. However, however they you, can't cannot be. Hold, you cannot hold a department responsible for the psychotic acts of a police officer after, after due diligence has been employed in checking out his background, conducting proper psychological screening, and afterwards, he comes nuts and does something crazy. Now, if he shows <laughs> indications, if he shows indications that he has been, and that department has not been taking due notice and diligence with regard to him after they have been properly notified of his improper behavior, then that's on the department. But please, all I ask you is this. Would you please evaluate each case individually on its own merits instead of just saying, well, they did it in this case, so therefore it must be true in this case? Or vice versa. Just do it on oh, his own merits. That's all I'm asking. 
I'm yeah, more no, visual I, person. I, I, I'm more, that. I, I understand. That. I can understand it, but I'm more visual. I'm going to buy a fact what I see, you know, what I hear. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not I'm not a law stew, you know what I'm saying? My profession is uh <laughs> cooking, you know what I mean? So I I don't, I don't think I'm gonna go all and get all into the marriage and stuff. I just go by on visual. You know, and I'm good with visual. And what I see, it's not right. And what I see, departments, I blame departments also because they should do background checks also. Like Background check shouldn't just go through there. You should have a daily background check. Uh, I'm not a daily, but a monthly. <laughs> a monthly. Yeah, I don't think anybody can afford Literally. a daily Literally. background check. That's, that's just not going to happen. I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating with the expensive. daily, but still. Like, seriously. It's too expensive. Like, you can't do it. But look, it, but yeah, here's the thing, expensive. though. It, it is, you know, uh, 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 annual assessments. Okay. That makes sense. Remember, that's you said you're going to do yeah, annual yeah. assessments. You've got yeah. to pay a competent professional to do it, and police departments are having a hard enough time coming up with money for overtime. Say nothing to paying competent psychiatric professionals true. to conduct true. a background. Look, how much? How many taxes you want to pay for the police department? How much? They got to right. train. They got to do all the stupid <laughs> sensitivity. They right, got to do right. all the stupid politically correct racial sensitivity training and uh, cultural sensitivity training and immigrant sensitivity, and homosexual sensitivity, all this other nonsense. They got to go. So when they go to class for that, they got to be paid for that. And I mean, come on. Right. How many times much tax money do you want to pay your uh, your police department to be? Police department's got to pick and choose where they're going to spend their money, like anything else. Look, and you got to yeah, remember too. True that. We got a well, system. That, we got wait. A minute, we got a system of. We got to pay taxes regardless. We got to pay taxes regardless. We're taxes. We got, the, we're tax, it's only two things definite in this world: death and taxes. They got to be paid. So who cares what they're going for? Oh, because because you don't know where they're going for. Uh, wait a minute. Are you I mean, we don't. We don't know where the shit go anyway. Wait, right? you we, don't, we don't know where it go. Wait a minute, you don't care oh, yeah. how much you get taxed. You don't care how much your property taxes are. <laughs> you don't care how much your property taxes are. Really? They don't care. Hey, hey, look, we can roll off something, man. I'll go back to the phone line. And I want to thank you so much for your call, though, bro. Appreciate you. And, uh, Appreciate you. Oh, but, sir. Good topic. For Keep sure, up man. the work. This topic needs discussion. Yes, the armed oh, yeah, forces exactly. can be a good thing for most black people. Not all, yeah. not in I all mean, instances, but most of the time. But most. I got you. I got all you. Right, Thank you for your call, man. Thank you for your service, bro. Appreciate you. Thing. You're welcome. All right. For sure. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you, you get out of control now, bro. I care. <laughs> you get out of control. I got, I, got to, I got to pull the reins back on that one. All right. We only got a few minutes left, man. I got, like, I got time for, like, one more caller, man. I'm going to shoot some phone lines. Uh, we had a very good discussion today, uh, kind of veered off into some other stuff, man. But, you know what I'm saying, shout out to the veteran that called in just a couple moments ago, man. Yes, sir. Big uh, up, sir. Yeah, for sure. But we're going to shoot the phone line for, the, uh, for our last caller, man. And then at the end of that, of course, we got my man Omizi Miles representing from uh, South Jersey, man. It's a musical guest at the end of the night tonight. We're going to shoot to the phone line through the one last call. I got 313-995. You all live straight from the E-Block. How about your boy? Oh man, <laughs> back on the block, baby. Man, I know you're. Uh, I saw. I've been re- looking at your page. You're out in Denver. I could truly say I do miss that uh, the, the studio when I used to come by and visit the studio. That 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 name of your studio really epitomized there. It was very comfortable. <laughs> you know, it was a comfort zone. It was just comfortable. Dude, you just felt at home. <laughs> It was, it was it was comfortable being there, given my point of view. It's comfort zone, damn show comfortable. So that lets well, me know you're you you the you right now over the phone line, sir. So you're just amazing, <laughs> man. Uh, the cho- so what you what you think, though, man? Military, a good place for a black person, or what? Uh, I would say this. It's, it, I don't say a black person, just people in general. If that, if you do, if you do want to, you know, sir protect the country, protect the constitutional rights, then yes, I'm all for that. But my thing is having family members who want in there, when you don't have a plan for yourself, I think the military can be, I hope nobody takes it, just be, just be negative because they, just like anything, any any, part, any machine, it's going to chew you up, spit you out. And we got too many veterans that we have here stateside that we really not taking care of, but we ran and rave and talking about we need more people to go fight these wars, but we not taking care of them back home. So I say at least you go in with right. a plan, become an officer, use all that all that 
money that we put towards them, you know, paying our taxes, as, as, as uh, money said earlier, that, you know, use that to get, you know, further your education, start uh, your own business. It could be a great opportunity, but for those those women and those men and young women, men and women who go into it and don't have a plan for themselves and come home hooked on drugs, uh, PT, I think it's is it PTDS or PDTS, one of the being you know post post traumatic syndrome. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like that's the part that, regardless of what your what your race is, it's unfortunate. I just want to make sure if you do, and I don't say I make sure. I would just like to see people go in there with a plan, like have a plan. If you want to protect. The stars and the stripes, hey, I'm all for you. I love sitting at home being able to Google whatever I want, and you protected my right to do that. But just please have a plan right. because when it's over, if you do one tour or you, like my brother did, he's doing, he did nine tours. I don't think he ever come on. Yeah. Either. So it's like it's almost like an athlete. When it's over, you don't really know what to do. And a lot of them get lost. You don't know what else to do. Yeah. And we, and right. You know what I'm saying? And we don't, and we, as a country, no offense, we just don't take care of them. I wish we did more for them because, yeah. obviously, they did protect our rights. But big business don't allow that. Like, okay, you know, you fought these wars, you made these million dollar guns for y'all, and then they don't have no jobs coming home waiting for them unless they go back into the service, and then they eventually become right. service men. Like, I think that movie American Sniper epitomized it all. His wife would man like, that that come home to him. I, I heard I heard about how it ended. I I never seen it, but I heard about how it ended. I was like, wow, that's crazy. It, it's deep because you see you see dudes. His wife would just basically saying, "Come home to me. You home." But you're somewhere else. But then I I I say this to anybody: when you see that much death around you, that many of your brothers and sisters losing their lives, it will tear out, tear away at your soul. I don't think we prepare those individuals who do sign up for that to come home and transition into normal life. But do I think it's a place for black men? Uh, that's a flip of the coin. So have you know some black men that made great strides in it? You know they fought through the, through the racial experiences, experience and all that stuff. And then there's some that they got chewed up and spit out, and they're at home hooked on heroin, but they are hooked on some form of drug, or but they can fix the hell of a carburetor. Because all they did was work on carburetors. He really right though. We only got a couple minutes left, man. But definitely, I, I feel what he's saying. Though. I mean, it, it is kind of a, it is a flip of a coin. But we go, we go, go ahead and sum it up because you know it's, it's our show, so we get the last say. So, what you say, man? I say, man, like I said at the beginning, bro, and I agree with some of the shit the officer said, and I agree with the last call that said too. You know what I'm saying? But. I still like he like he said. I done known some people that strive and did big things with it, and I also know people that fix carburetors too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know. So I mean, I mean, it's really a catch twenty two for your boy. You know what I mean? I think it's it's good for some people. You know what I'm saying? To get that knowledge and that guidance, like like that, like the you know, the officer did. You know what I'm saying? He got his guidance. He got you know what I'm saying? He said the best thing he ever did. In some situations, right. it can be. Yeah. And a lot, and in, in a lot of situations, it can't be. So, I mean, right. it, I'm, it's up in the air for your boy. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I mean, definitely, I, I think it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be hard to give it a, a, a direct answer because, of course, sure. it is gonna be dependent upon each individual. But I think this. I mean, I think that it's a just like just like the officer said, just kind of like uh, what the what the last caller said is it's a it's a great place for a black person with a with a plan. A black person without a plan is a terrible place. And I say that only because I, I know people who went into the military with, with no plan. And this is probably not just, uh, you know, divided by race. Um, but I only speak, you know, I kind of speak about the black race because it's what I know most about. So I say that I think for a black person who is is kind of, you know, under, I won't say uh, just don't have a real focus. I mean, because it, it sounds like my man went into the into the service with a plan. So he wasn't yeah. he wasn't messing around. He went with a plan. But I know some dudes that go without a plan, and it's a terrible decision. And then it starts to make you think about how. And this is just my problem. And, and obviously, like we mentioned earlier about the uh, Greg Hardy thing and about the uh, Missouri uh, University thing, is that we get all of our information secondhand. So this right. is the only this is all information I'm consuming, not knowing it you know firsthand. So everything is secondhand, especially in this age, because of because of the internet. 
So I, I, it, it just, it's just hard for me. It's hard for me knowing where I'm, you know, where I'm from and seeing what's going on with the, the black people um, underneath this umbrella of the government. I mean, I, I'm thankful for uh, President Obama, but at the same time, it's just a, it's just a machine that he works for. And it, the, the fact is, is that you're going out to protect the, the rights that we have, which is definitely something that we have because there, there's other places, other, other countries that don't have, you know, nearly what we have. So I'm thankful for that. But it's hard, it's hard to fathom going out to fight for somebody that when you come back, they don't fight for you. Nice. And, that, and that's, that's where my mindset is. And I know, and, and I got uncles and, you know, uh, I got uncles and, and my old man, you know, who served in, in, in Vietnam. And it's hard because you're coming up in a time where when they came back, they said, uh-uh, don't do that shit, bro. Don't do it. So, like, when you hear that, like, this is, this is, what, you, this is what your experience has been, that the people that did go was coming home and telling you, dog, don't do it. And then they tell you to look around, like, this is what we was out here fighting for. And then we come home, and they don't even fight for us. Exactly. So that is, you know, that's my thing on that. But, hey, look, man, we had a very spirited discussion tonight, man. <laughs> very spirited, dog. So I, I love that, man. Thank you for everybody that reached out to us tonight, everybody that called in, everybody that took down on the radio. For sure, man. There's a lot of calls from out of town, too, man. So we getting, we getting some love out here. You know what I'm talking about? So I appreciate that. So make sure that y'all follow us on uh, on social media, on uh, Instagram and Twitter, on Man Real Monk Money, and of course myself, who is Howard Stern. All right, and then we'll be back next week at the same time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can check out the replay on www.eblockradio.com. But uh, you know what time it is? Time, <laughs> so it's time to get up out of here. And as always, man, rest in peace to my dog Buns, man. For sure. Uh, be my guy. For sure, man. We up out of here, dog. You know what it is, man. The live style radio show on the planet. It's your boy. The hood, how it's done, Q. Lewis. That dude, Monk Money. For sure, we out. The livest cloud radio show on the planet. E Block Radio. Watch my uncle hustle from the porch. Getting money, hustle like a sport. Single minds, welfare, no support. My kinfolk ran the whole damn block. Around the time, Lil Wayne dropped the block. We ran through the hood like we was made niggas. Stanley Holmes Village, we was raised niggas. Drug trade, mean to getting paid niggas. Watching for the police in the race niggas. Billy dead, overdosed on every way. That's the streets displaying the love of gang. Getting money, any means necessary. necessary. Dodging bullets, running through the cemetery. cemetery. On the road to riches, this is time living. living. Checking for the cops, hanging in the kitchen. Ooh. Always surrounded by beautiful women. Smoking while I'm drinking, got a nigga faded. I was a celebrity before I made it. Yeah. Money is my only fucking motivation. The streets love it, love it. The block love it. Yeah. When I was 13, 13. who the Baltimore feels a hurt dream? Her dream. Be more careful with the word me. You can die any moment from the unseen. Yeah, Papa was a rolling stone. Rolling he ain't know I understood what was going on. Hustling was in his blood. In his blood. He couldn't not that hustling, that's all it was. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what am I to do? do. Gunshots every morning, waking up at school. Uh. And I'm from the hood too, but now I'm in the hood by myself with no crew. Daddy at the table cleaning off the bullet. No fingerprints in case he got a bullet. Beans in line like so train. For that hard rock, Kurt Cobain. Lord, please forgive me, cause I'm filled with sense. 
greed for the money and I got a win. I was a celebrity before I made it. Money is my only fucking motivation. The streets love it, love it. The block love it, yeah. Bad bitch, she won't play so on the floor, no. Gotta turn this half to a whole flip. Money, Lord, please forgive me, that's just how it is. Yeah. The livest cloud radio show on the planet. E-Block Radio.